Welcome, Janet. Thank you. Just what do you mean by adolescent family therapy? Well, with adolescent family therapy, you have parents or a single parent who brings their child in for therapy, for counseling. A child who usually doesn't feel that he or she has a need to be there at all. So I work with them based on a number of assumptions that I keep. One being that if I were to try and control the adolescent's behavior or try and get them to stop doing what they're doing, the therapy is going to fall apart. I don't have that kind of control over them. If I'm thinking that I'm going to be helpful by trying to talk logic to the teenager, that's not going to work either because they're not going to listen, they're not going to hear it. And their logic, off they have their own logic based on their own assumptions that might be different from the adults right. involved. Your, your work focuses yeah. on teenagers then basically, but would you find any adjustments between working with a teenager and a younger child or would you include the child in the family constellation? If, I, if the child were the presenting client? Well, say you had an a adolescent and there was a eight-year-old and a five-year-old and a 12-year-old in the family, but the 15 was a presenting problem. Would oh, okay. they be there what or I, would you? Yeah. Oh, they might be there. Hmm. I often want to know on the telephone consultation initially who's in the family, yeah. and then I find out who I'd like to be there. Often it will be the whole family, hmm. including the father. Um, I'd like everyone to be there. Sometimes, if it's a very volatile or sensitive situation, perhaps just the parents and the teenager. Hmm. What's left? I mean, you take away control, you've taken away logic, what can you do? Well, in, in a couple of moments, we're going to watch you work with a mother and a daughter. And I think it'll probably highlight a lot of what we've been talking about. Can you set that up a little bit for our viewers in terms of what you were doing and what they might look for in changes in the dynamics between the family members? Okay. The, um, a mother comes in with her daughter, who's 15. Uh, and the mother is experiencing a lot of behavior problems with the daughter. The daughter is very provocative and, you know, really does her own thing, comes and goes when she wants to, and, and as it turns out, you know, just assumes all kinds of privileges around the house and gets in the mother's face. The mother was feeling so beleaguered and so overwhelmed that one of the things I wanted to do was to try and help her feel like one more time, take a deep breath and, and see what she could do to um, not... Um, wilt under the daughter's incessant prov provocations mm -hmm. while understanding that it was hard to do that, but to try and get her to be willing to marshal her reserves another time with whatever support she can get to do that. I, it was surprising to me when I opened the session with a, a question of how could I be of help or something like that, that it was the daughter who immediately piped up and had the answer, which said a lot about the daughter's conception of her role, which was that she was a spokesperson. She wanted to get her two cents in before the mother. And it says a lot about her that she even thought she could do that, mm -hmm. that she wasn't inhibited from doing that, even if she wanted to. I, I, I think... So you're looking at the process, and you're looking at, at who speaks, how they speak, what that means in the relationship, right. and we should watch the way you respond to that? Yes, because I, I think what I did shortly thereafter was, was it address the mother uh, as a way to say, this really wasn't your question to answer. Mm. 